Hi, everybody. Dr. Doc Vong here, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. I do COVID talks because that affects my community and following. So tonight I want to talk about the new COVID, coronavirus variants, um, what that means with the vaccines, the current state of the vaccine rollout and other updates. And then I'll take your questions. So this will be a quick broadcast. Um, I'm pretty mellow today. I think you're probably pretty safe to share this broadcast. I'm not particularly angry about anything right now. I'm kind of um, chilling, you know, it is what it is. As somebody once, somebody famous once said <coughs> about coronavirus. <laughs> <coughs> I choked on my water trying not to laugh at that statement. <laughs> um, so as y'all know, the coronavirus is kind of raging out of control. Um, the surge from Christmas is starting to settle down. We'll see what happens with a surge from um, New Year's. We should be hitting that here uh, on Thursday. And, uh, but um, you know, the latest projection out of CDC is 500,000 American deaths uh, from, um, from just America alone by mid-February. That's the new CDC director, the Biden director. And pretty much everybody's agreed with her. Um, the projection was 400,000 deaths by uh, inauguration January 20th, which is two days from today. And we are going to definitely hit that number and surpass it. As of today, we're at 397,000 American deaths alone. Alone, guys. It's ridiculous. Over 2 million people have died worldwide from the pandemic. And so there are still people who um, think this is a hoax and, and a joke. And, and I think that's really sad. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that. They know who they are. And they know where they can go. So we're going to talk uh, a little bit about variants. I've done a video uh, about mutations. I talked about the South African mutation. I talked about the um, UK mutation, which now, you know, they're trying to get away from uh, countries of origin, like the China virus, UK vir variant, et cetera. Um, we are, um, you know, have official names. So the UK variant from on is going to be called B117. Uh, and there's a longer one for the South African variant. But, um, that seems to be the same as the Nigerian variant. So there's a lot of variants, okay? So let's go back real quick and talk about the difference between strain and uh, variant. Remember strains, it, so there's a big family of viruses. That family is called coronavirus. In that family are some fucked up members that cause disease. Those are called strains. The, this particular strain is SARS-CoV-2. And that strain causes a D, the disease called COVID. There are other strains that cause like MERS, that cause SARS, et cetera. This one causes COVID-19 is the disease. And the actual strain is called SARS-CoV-2. Now, what you're seeing now are variants of this one strain. Okay, so we need to get our terminology right. So when, um, when President Trump used to say the China virus, always made me so happy to hear him say that. Um, he was talking about the strain SARS-CoV-2. And now when we say the UK variant, the South African variant, those are variants off of the SARS-CoV-2 strain, AKA the China virus. Does that make sense? So when people sit there and say, you know, you can't call it the China virus, but you can call it the South African virus. It, no, because we're not calling it the South African vi virus. It's a variant. Um, and there are other political implications by calling it the Chinese China virus, by the way. Okay. But that's fine. It's all said and done. It doesn't bother me. It's, it's just different. And we're trying to get away. Um, just like we, the professionals didn't call it the China virus. We call it SARS-CoV-2. We're trying to get away from the um, terminology UK variant and calling it B117. I don't think they have officially decided on the name for the South African variant. They're still trying to figure that out. And um, so far the Nigerian variant is very similar to the South African variant. Okay, um, that's number one. We gotta get our terminology straight. Number two, update, uh, as a reminder, uh, mutate uh, viruses mutate, that's what they, they do and it's by random numbers it's purely chance so viruses are not living creatures they are just 
either D strands of DNA or RNA that happen to have the replication mechanism encoded, wrapped in usually some sort of envelope uh, and uh, some sort of capsule, and they just float. They they just float in the air looking for hosts and replicate and spread. And um, there's nothing about them that's alive, which is completely weird. It's statistical chance on mutations. And so it, mutations are basically a breakdown, uh, a, 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 a printing error in its replication machinery. And just by the sheer number of replications it makes, it will just by pure chance stumble upon a mutation that causes a, a new biological effect. Usually that effect um, makes the virus easier to spread, um, but less virulent. So uh, it only makes sense. As viruses mutate, they gen generally tend to become less virulent. Why? Because um, they don't want to kill their host they want to spread now they don't want anything because i just said they're not alive so but it doesn't help them if they become more virulent so typically you know if they kill off their host so they want you to live so is that an aha for some people i know that sounds weird because um you know the way we've we've spread this is that to say like oh this if you catch SARS-CoV-2, if you catch coronavirus, it'll kill you. Well, yes, it has a very high, relatively speaking, a very high death rate, not as high as Ebola, but much higher than the fucking everyday flu, seasonal flu. So so the, for the Uncle Billy's out there, for the idiot people who are still saying this is just a bad flu, they don't know what the fuck they are talking about. You got to listen to me. This coronavirus, when it's all said and done, right now, um, you know, it's about 30 times more deadly than uh, influenza, the seasonal flu. When it's all said and done, it'll be about 10 times more deadly probably. But still, we're talking 500,000 Americans alone dying by May. And by before this pandemic is over, 700,000 Americans will probably die is my estimate, maybe higher. And I was being called a fear monger by saying 700,000. There's an old video of me from last April that said, if we could keep our deaths under 100,000 American deaths, we would be doing our jobs. And people were on that video calling me a fear monger at 100,000. Now look at us. We're at 397,000 uh, American deaths alone, 2 million worldwide. And it's just ridiculous, all right? So if 700,000 Americans die by the end of this, guess how many that is? That's in, that's one in 500 Americans will have died, not caught coronavirus, man, fucking died. It's ridiculous. Coronavirus is the number one killer of Americans right now. It's more than heart attacks. It's more than car wrecks. It's more than, and then these idiots sit there and go, you know, you know, more people die from car wrecks and we don't sit shut down. No, they don't. Where the fuck are you getting your statistics? It's so stupid, man. It's so dumb, all right? So we got to get our terminology right. So put a one in the comment section if that is like a major surprise to you that viruses don't really mean to kill us. <laughs> because if they kill the host, they also go bye-bye. And that's actually what happened with Ebola. Uh, remember Who remembers when we were so scared of Ebola spreading and, and spreading everywhere, right? Um, so... Um, so this particular coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, to date is like the mother of all viruses. It has come to this very nice balance in virology terms of being contagious fast enough to be uh, being causing enough symptoms to really screw with you, but not killing you off too fast. And the other thing that this SARS-CoV-2 does that's very different than other viruses, it has a very long incubation period. So in case you've forgotten, I've done videos on this, but the average, um, the average virus has an incubation period of about two to three days. That's it. And this SARS-CoV-2 has an incubation of uh, seven to 14 days. Average is about five. Uh, five to seven days, but it can be as long as 14 days. 
That's crazy. You know, if you had a virus that like that is sitting there inside your body, a virus that can sit inside its host body and like evade detection long enough that it just like starts to replicate before the host, like three times longer evading capture. Think of that in military terms. Pretty fucking crazy. Am I right? So, um, so it's a, a surprise to people when I tell them the, the purpose of a virus is not to kill you. It, the, a great example of that is herpes, right? What's the old joke about the herpes virus? The gift that keeps on giving you're all <laughs> uncle Billy. <laughs> oh, the gift that keeps giving uncle Billy. <laughs> so, um, but other than like a cold sore, some other herpetic lesions are, are worse, obviously, but, but the different strains of herpes leads to different, um, different diseases too. And that, that's why those are strains and not variants. So now I want to talk about, so now we have these variants. Okay. There, there's an American variant. Did you know that there are two strains in, that were discovered last week in Ohio? I was going to do a video lot this weekend about it, but I just decided I, there was enough noise. I didn't really need to add to it, but did you realize that the U S has a strain in Ohio? There's possibly a strain in uh, San Francisco. Oh, I'm sorry. See, I fucked up, man. There's a variant in Ohio, two, two possible variants in Ohio, a possible variant in, um, in uh, San Francisco. There's possibly an, another variant in, in Japan. So, um, and I've, I've already talked about the Nigerian variant probably being very similar, if not the same variant as a UK variant. I'm mean, sorry, the South African South African variant. So I wouldn't freak out about these variants. That's the first update I want to tell you because we're going to see a lot more of this, and and there these fuckers are going to mostly come from America. Why? Why? Who knows the answer? The answer is because remember variations. Variants happen because viruses are allowed to replicate. They it is a byproduct of replication error. So I'll make up a number. If you've got 10 viruses out there and they're replicating, they're replicating, what are the chances they're going to mutate? Their mutations will last. Not as much. But if you got millions of viruses out there fucking replicating all the fucking time, there's going to be an error. So you, that's why uh, I predict the U.S. is going to see a lot more variants. Um, so this is just the start. Ohio variant, San Francisco variant. That's just the fucking start, okay? Now, um, remember though, most ver most mutations don't end up being anything, and only the the mutations that show a survival benefit and uh, a behavior difference then we call that a variant. Most likely, it doesn't lead to more disease. Um, so I quit stressing about about that too much. Now, what the next thing I want to talk about is these new variants and vaccines. A lot of people are freaked out about this. And I will tell you, that is a concern that um, eventually, just by pure fucking chance, guys, you guys understand this, by pure chance, number of replications, that the variant could come up that evades our vaccines. And that's of concern. So the update I want to give you are, is some uh, recent uh Pub papers that haven't been peer reviewed, but early publications seem to suggest that so far the UK variant and the South African variant are susceptible to um, the the two vaccines we have, the Moderna and the Pfizer. Okay, um, there might be a slight drop in efficacy, that means effectiveness, with the South African variant, but it's very slight. It's better than nothing. And it's way fucking better than a Chinese vaccine. Whoever's buying that Chinese vaccine, oh man, no, that's a horrible vaccine. It's not. It's not doing much. All right. So I would stress out about it now. Let me take you to the third tip, and this, and we'll wrap it up. So what does that mean? We need to do. What's the best way to ensure that we don't have a variant that escapes our vaccines? What's the best way? To, to to decrease the risk of that? The answer, we got to get our fucking numbers down. 
We've got to get the number of cases down, guys. We need to keep wearing masks. We need to social distance. We got to get the number of fucking viruses out there replicating like this down to like a manageable number. Like, like, okay, now you have fewer chances and then eventually we'll get down to this. Does that make sense? It's like you guys are at EDC. <laughs> you fuckers didn't know I knew what EDC was, did you? <laughs> I knew. <laughs> Feel sorry for my daughter, my teenage daughter. <laughs> uh, all right. So no acid trips, man. Right. We got to get this crazy numbers uh, down to something more manageable because the more viruses you got mu replicating, the more chances of mutations. Does that make sense? So uh, let me. Lastly, let me talk about the vaccine options we have. In America, we have the Moderna and the Pfizer. Both of those are two dose vaccines, all right? I get this question a lot, and that's why I'm gonna answer it. Remember, you need both doses, but what if I get one dose, Dr. Bong? Is one dose enough? <laughs> well, no, not really, because the science, the trials, the ongoing trials, by the way, um, had a distribution uh, protocol, a, a, a protocol where you got dosed twice. Okay. So we do know that around 10 to 14, 10 to 14 days after your first dose, you have the largest immune response from that first uh, vaccination. Now, first of all, there's a very, very small number of people who, for whatever reason, do not stimulate a response to the vaccine. It could be a dead vaccine. It could be something for the person receiving it. Um, it could be that it was given wrong, all sorts of stuff, right? So, but it's a very, 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 very small percentage, okay? Very small percentage. I wouldn't even worry about that. Now, what I will say is that uh, there, there are some people like that, but but so the well, what I was talking about was the, the highest, and they've looked at this, the highest antibody response is about 10 to 14 days after your first dose, and then it tapers down, and in the case of the Pfizer, in 21 days, you got to get a booster. And, and in Moderna, in 28 days, you get another booster. And then psh, you boost up. Now, listen to me. You're not fucking Superman. You're not fucking Wonder Woman after that first shot. Don't. So who's thinking here? Who's thinking? You guys keep perpetuating these like, Dr. V, did you hear about this person who got the vaccine and they got sick 10, like they got sick five days later? Well, duh. You don't have antibodies. You're not protected. So let's say the first people were getting um, the uh, first doses of the vaccines in, in mid-December. Well, guess what? They might have gathered for, new, for Christmas because they thought they were like, oh, I'm protected. I got my vaccine. They should have known better. No, you don't. You don't have any protection worth long-term while. And long-term wise, if you only get your one dose, if you only get your one dose, the number is about 50%. 50 to 60% efficacy. That doesn't mean, efficacy means reduced um, chances of catching it and, and severity of disease, of severity of disease. It doesn't mean you don't get it. It just means it reduces your disease. All right, I've done a video on that too. So, uh, so now you're hearing stories of pe about people actually coming down with it, testing positive, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's very different than having a post-vaccination symptoms like I feel bad, I feel tired, I have a little achy body ache. We know about that. I'm talking about people who literally have, get the vaccine five, seven, 10 days later, they test positive for coronavirus, not antibody, but PCR or nasal. They're feeling bad. They actually have coronavirus. Well, because you don't have protection yet. Who understands this? Put a yes in the comment section if you understand what I am saying, okay? You don't have protection yet. After the first dose, you don't have protection yet. All right. So um, the trials, the, I will say it again, the ongoing, thank you. Thank you. Yes. 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 Look at that. Man, I tell, I keep telling you, you guys are smarter than the average viewers. Dr. V viewers, V viewers. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you don't have protection yet. All right. Now the trials to get to the 94, 95% efficacy is the two dosing regimen. So motherfucker, 
Go back for your second dose. Go back for dose number two. You got dose number one. You don't. You need dose number two. You understand? So you need both doses. Now you can't sit there and dissociate the result from the methodology. You got to stick to the plan, the methodology, which will lead me to my last. It's a little opinion piece. This part is an opinion piece, man. And you know, Dr. Vaughn will shoot it to you straight. Amen. Can I have an amen? Here's the opinion piece. You know, we've been told in the past, and I, not my words, their words, that there is a stockpile. They're holding back 20 million doses for the second for the second dose. So, um, like, if they gave 20 million doses now, 20, 20 million people would be vaccinated. They were holding back 20 million doses in a stockpile to guarantee that these people who got their 20, that got their vaccines would get their second dose. Does that make sense? Well, last week, last, it came out, guess what? <laughs> no fucking stockpile. There's no stockpile. All right, that's from administration. And so the administration explains this as they misunderstood, they didn't, understand. like I, don't, I go back and I listen. Y'all said we're gonna release the stockpile. That means there's a stockpile. You call it a stockpile and you say, we're going to make it available. We're going to release it, which means we, why would you say you're going to release a stockpile you know doesn't exist unless you think it exists? Well, it turns out it doesn't fucking exist. I'm just reading between the lines. You can agree with me or disagree with me. So then to spin it, they're saying, oh, well, we have confidence that the manufacturers, Pfizer and Moderna can have production. So that's going to guarantee that everybody has their second dose. All right, motherfucker. If that's the fucking case, then why has Pfizer and Moderna, Pfizer started decreasing um, the doses that they're giving to the European Union and to the UK and to Canada? What's up with that? If you are so good with your manufacturing, we are confident in our manufacturing process. If you're so fucking confident, then why are you decreasing the doses that you're giving to these other countries? Because you're fucking lying. Come on. You're hoping. You're hoping. This is a Hail Mary. You're going to tell us one thing. And hopefully in the next two to three weeks, you get a Hail Mary. And, and, and we forget. And, 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 and only like instead of 20 million, there's 10 million. You'll, you'll be able to hit the 10 million mark and say, oh, the other 10 million, don't worry. Your vaccine's on the way. You know, we have pretty. Watch this. Motherfucker, watch me. They're, you're going to start hearing people say this. They're going to be like, you know, uh, we're pretty, co we're confident your vaccine doses are on. So you say, when, when, when people start to like, hey, I can't get my second dose. There's no second dose. And people are going to be like, the, the spin doctors are going to be like, no, no, no. Your, your doses are on the way. Your doses, just hang tight. And they're going to slowly stretch it out. They're going to slowly stretch it out. And they're going to get these fucking talking heads on TV that sit there and go, you know, we have we have relatively good confidence. You have some protection from your first dose, and we can stretch this out maybe one, two more weeks. We, dude, they're gonna be fucking spin doctoring, which is fucking fine. I don't care, except I fall back. We have the papers. This is the trial. This is the methodology we use that got us this result. We should not be fucking with the methodology. That's all I'm saying. Now the other thing is I'm gonna say is this. We, I don't know about you, I don't know about Uncle Billy, but we're fucking adults. I can handle the fucking truth. Just tell me the truth. If you had just told me the truth from day one, maybe we wouldn't be here. Okay? Does that make sense? So, last thing, and I'll end it with this. It's what you got to do, guys. Listen, what you have to do. So, for the long-term near future, <laughs> did you like that? For the long-term near future... You have to continue to wear your mask, even if you had the vaccine. I can do another video about that. It does not stop you from catching the virus. If you've been vaccinated, both doses, you can still harbor virus inside your nose. But because you have the vaccine, it's not going to make you sick because that, that was the data. That was the study endpoint when we did the, the trials. So the vaccine will keep you from getting sick, but you have virus inside your nose, you sing, you cough, you praise God, you rally, you protest, you whatever, you lecture, you yell, you're spreading virus. Does that make sense? You cough, you sneeze, you have allergies. You're not sick with coronavirus, 
but you're infected, you're going to spray it. So what we have to do is we have to continue wearing a face mask, social distancing until these numbers get ridiculously down almost to zero. So you're going to be doing this for the remainder of 2021. Okay. Remainder of 2021. Does that make sense? If this has been helpful, please hit the share button for me. I'd appreciate that. As always, I will edit this down and I will put it up on my YouTube channel, the edited down version. Okay, so you can share. I appreciate that. Um, prayers and well wishes to our, our nurses and doctors and aides, nurses, aides, CRNAs, anesthesiologists, ER doctors, ambulance, paramedics, first responders, everybody who has to work. If you don't have to be out there in contact, please stay home. But remember, this virus, this disease, this pandemic responds as how we respond. They are not the front line, guys. Our nurses and doctors, they're not the front lines. So who are the front lines? We are the front lines. People like you and me. What happens with this pandemic depends on how we behave. So you need to fucking quit being a baby, roll up your sleeve, roll up in your car, in your little wagon, roll up your sleeve and take that big ass fucking needle in the arm, you know, like a woman. <laughs> Cause I, you know, I'd say like a man, but you see, you saw what happened on J January 6th. I, I don't know how men are behaving these days, man. It's the women who's keeping this shit together. Love and prayers for our women. I'm telling you, we need to start saying that. And Betty White, happy birthday to Betty White. She says, you know, I, I, she her 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 funny thing was like, I don't know what the big thing about balls are. Balls are sensitive. You kick them once and they go down, but a vagina can take a pounding and gets right back up. <laughs> Gotta love Betty White. We need to be more like vaginas, man. We need to roll up, roll up our sleeves, get the fucking shot, quit being a pussy in a good way. And, you know, like do what's right. Wear the mask. I can't breathe. It makes me so uncomfortable. I can't. Uh. Really? We're a year into this, man. January 20th on Wednesday would be the one year anniversary of the first patient who came down with coronavirus in the United States. And here we are a year later. Look at that. 